Hey JCA, happy Sunday. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Um, this may look like a really big mess right now, but I'm really excited for today because I'm going to go step by step through so many of my tips and tricks and gadgets that I use in the kitchen. I'm going to explain the best sweeteners and the best fats and all the best marinades and sauces and all kinds of goodies today. So today is the day. If you have questions, I'm really going to try to pay attention to the feed and if you type in your question I'm happy to try to answer it um, so join in say hi and let's get going um, so I don't even know where to begin here let's start with um, my favorite fats so there is a rhyme and reason to the types of fats that we use in our cooking number one is pay attention to the temperature with which you are going to be cooking. If you're cooking something at a really high temperature, it's very important to choose the types of fats that do not burn. So as an example, olive oil is a quite delicate oil and it burns easily. So anytime oil burns, it creates, anytime food burns in general, it creates um, compounds that can be damaging and you may have heard that sometimes when you eat really charred meat that that could be carcinogenic it's a similar idea with any type of burning of food so olive oil is one of the more delicate oils I recommend using olive oil only when you're cooking at very low temperatures so you may even use it at the end of cooking instead of at the beginning once the food is already cooked because olive oil will add that um, the, the mouth texture that you're looking for and also a really delicious flavor so I have a particular favorite olive oil that I actually order online and I get a big box that comes with like six bottles at a time and it lasts me such a long time. Um, the reason that I do that is because we're learning that many olive oils are not actually pure, even though when you see them at the supermarket and you look at their label, it says only olive oil on the label. We are learning that they are still not 100% pure and they could be refined, which means that the compounds in the olive oil have been changed and more processed, basically. We always want to choose ingredients that are unprocessed. So this is my favorite olive oil is called Cassandrinos and I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Um, I order it from this company. It's come, I think, I believe it's Greek um, is the, uh, the origin and I do order this and it is absolutely delicious. I use it at the end of my cooking or in salad dressings or anytime you want to really get that good delicious flavor, have healthy olive oil, which by the way, olive oil is particularly healthy for us. So fats in general are really healthy for us. We have to clear our mind from all of those, um, that misinformation that we had been taught back in the 80s and the 90s when we learned that, or, or when we were told that fat is what raises our cholesterol and and that is always a negative thing and that it actually is not true. Fat cholesterol is needed for our brains to work. <laughs> it is needed, fat is needed for the membranes around every single cell in our bodies. So if you're noticing that when you remove fat from your diet that you feel a little brain fog or that your skin is really dry, then these could be um, uh, symptoms of not having enough healthy fat in your diet. So just to, to talk about the health aspect of this a little bit, but going back to choosing the right oils to use. So already mentioned, olive oil is for when you're cooking at really low temperatures 
or just adding it to your the end of your cooking or your salad dressings. When you're raising the temperature and you're cooking foods at medium to high temperature, so whether you're putting the stove top on medium to high or you're putting the oven at higher than 375, that's when you're wanting to think about using oils that do not burn at high temperatures. So examples of that would be avocado oil, coconut oil, and ghee. Ghee is a substitute for butter. I like ghee better than butter. Number one, we are dairy free in my house and we'll go into that another time. But number two, ghee has more of a very healthy compound called short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids is the, um, what the compound that is released by the healthy bacteria in our gut. And it is used for healthy digestion and good gut health. So um, ghee has some of those compounds in them and it also has a higher smoke point than butter. So again, why ghee is another good example of something that you can use when you're cooking at higher temperatures. So that's my fat discussion. Let's move on to my sweeteners. I'm always asked, well, what is a good healthy sweetener replacement for sugar? Um, sugar is, and basically all carbohydrates in general, are food, are a food that spikes insulin in everybody. Insulin will go up when you eat carbohydrates, and that is a very healthy, normal process for your body to regulate blood sugar and digest carbohydrates. However, if we go overboard on carbohydrates and sugar and we have too much insulin, then insulin will tell our bodies to store these calories as fat. So this is why if we're struggling with weight, oftentimes, even though it seems like it's fat that is accumulating on our body, it's not actually dietary fat that is causing the problem. It's more likely dietary sugar or carbohydrate because that spikes insulin and with higher and higher amounts of insulin, our bodies are told to store those calories as fat. So try cutting back on carbohydrates and sweeteners if that and sugar if that is something that if weight loss is something that you're struggling with. However, there are better options for sugar. So I do realize that we do want that sweet taste in some of our foods and just using in moderation is just fine. But here are some good options. Number one, I love honey and maple syrup. So those are two really good options. I try to choose organic whenever possible. Um, I try to look on the label and make sure that that's all that these um, products contain is the maple syrup or the honey and that they're unprocessed. Those are always things that I look for on all of my labels. Um, some other really great sweetener options are dates. Dates are a super healthy food, and you can actually get dates in a syrup as well if that's how you want to add like a liquid sweetener to your food, but dates or date syrup, they actually improve your digestion. The date itself provides lots of fiber, which I'm not sure you get as much of in the syrup, but you definitely get the fiber in the whole date. Um, and what's really interesting about dates is that they also help with bone health. If you are at all fearful of if you're you know if you have weaker types of bones if you've been tested and been uh, told that you have type of osteopenia or osteoporosis then we want to start focusing on healthy ways to improve our bone health and dates is one of those foods that has a benefit in your for your bones um, and then my last one, actually no, two more that I have, molasses. I love molasses. It adds a really rich um, sort of caramel type flavor to your sauces if you're mixing it with um, some 
vinegar and mustard or um, even some, um, I don't even know, um, that some butter also will make it much more creamy and that would make a good combination of a good sauce for some of your foods. So, and then the last one, this is the last one that I was gonna say, is stevia extract. Stevia extract is actually a very healthy ingredient. It is antimicrobial, it is an antioxidant. Um, try to make sure you're getting it as an extract. And not everybody loves the flavor of stevia or the taste of it in their mouth, so try it out. I happen to really like it, and I add it to my smoothies to sweeten them up a little bit. Um, so, And you could use it in your coffee or your tea. Um, so I actually do like the flavor of stevia extract. So now we got through my fats, my sweeteners, now I wanted to talk about some of these extra little powders and goodies, I'd say, that I add to my day. I try to include these things throughout my day because they are especially helpful for brain health, for bone health, for immune health. Um, each of them have a different uh, function and I just try to sprinkle them throughout my day to just try to help my health, my overall health as much as possible. So one is matcha tea. So this, um, I actually in particular love this brand. It's called Encha, which is E-N-C-H-A. You can Google that brand. It is a little bit pricey, but you literally only use you, like a half a teaspoon a day. So it lasts a really long time, and it is especially healthy, antioxidant. It helps with brain. It really does clear your brain fog and just help helps you function more efficiently. I really noticed a difference when I've added this, sprinkling it into my tea during the day or my smoothie or just, you know, getting it in somehow. <laughs> um, another ingredient that also good for cognition and brain health is lion's mane mushroom powder. Again, something that I just sprinkle in wherever I can, making sure I just get a little bit of it every single day. If as we age, our brain cells do begin to lose the speed with which that they function. So these are ingredients that will just promote good brain health as we age. So I really recommend these things. The one was the matcha tea that I said. The brand again was Encha, E-N-C-H-A. Um, Lion's Mane Mushroom. You can look this up on Amazon. That's where I get it from. And I just like this one brand called Real Mushrooms. And again, it comes in a little pouch like this and I just add it throughout my day wherever I could sprinkle it in. Um, Green tea in general is a really healthy um, thing to include in your day, in your in all your days if you could. It's again a really powerful antioxidant. Um, there's lots of studies to show that people who drink green tea on a daily basis improve their health, reduce risk for cancer, um, improve their brain, their cognition, lots of different things from green tea. And I especially love the brand. It's called Traditional Medicinals. And again, anything that I mentioned today, if you miss it, if you want me to spell it out for you in the comments, please feel free to write my, the question in, and I'll answer that for sure. Um, but traditional medicinals, you have to actually be a little bit careful with the types of teas that you drink because depending on where they come from, they're not always pure. There could be contaminants in them. So I especially like this brand and they have many, many types of teas, not just the green tea. But what I love about this company is they show you that they are third-party tested 
for purity and quality. There are no contaminants and they're just, when you taste them, you actually do realize, you can tell the difference in these teas. Their flavor is really powerful and really delicious. Um, they have lots of different types. If you, you know, don't want green tea, they have turmeric and um, they have ones that are, that give you, that are meant to wake you up in the morning and ones that help you rest at night. So I recommend looking through this brand, Traditional Medicinals, and, and picking and choosing ones that are your favorites. Um, and then Bulk Supplements. This is a, comp uh, a company that you can go to online, bulksupplements.com, and you will find if there are any of these types of powders and weird remedies that you particularly like, then this company is a great way to get it in bigger amounts for a little less expensive. So I do like this company a lot. And from here, I get this one, which is pomegranate extract. So pomegranates is another great ingredient. It can help reduce blood pressure. Um, it is also a really powerful antioxidant, very similar to the ingredient that's in green tea. So another powder that, again, I just sprinkle into my smoothies and my teas and wherever I could get that in. Um, so some of my, those are some of my secret ingredients that um, I don't necessarily put in my food as cooking recipes, but definitely ingredients that I want to include throughout my days to just keep me as sharp in every way that I possibly can be. Okay, so we got through my healthy fats. We got through my healthy sweeteners. Now we got through all of my healthy um, little secret ingredients that I like to include throughout my day. Um, I thought I would talk about some of the recent sauces that I have been really excited to find. So when I shop for packaged foods, I've talked about this before, I throw out, I don't even look at the label that says how many calories, how many grams of sugar, how many grams of fat. To me, that's not important. If you're getting a whole unprocessed food, there will be a healthy combination of fats, carbohydrates, and protein. Um, and I'm not gonna worry, uh, this is not a math experiment. I'm not gonna be counting these things throughout the day. I'm not gonna be measuring my calories. There are some individuals who will need to do that. Um, you know, there are athletes who need to make a certain calorie amount, a certain protein amount for their muscles, um, carbohydrate for their energy, and fat for um, you know their for the, just everything to work properly <laughs> in their body. Um, but you know, and then there are people who are aging and maybe ha are starting to lose your appetite a little bit, and those people need to measure making sure they're getting enough protein to prevent sarcopenia or you know, to make sure that they um, just don't lose weight and that they maintain a healthy weight. So there are people in individual situations that will need to think about those things. But um, if you're not one of those people, and I don't consider myself that yet, um, I don't count calories and I don't count this kind of information. But what I do is I look at the ingredient label and I make sure that every food that is listed is actually a food. A food that my brain recognizes when I see it as a food. I know that I will, my body will recognize it also as a food. Um, if there's a compound, something that you can't pronounce or something that you know is not the, the way that it, it was found in nature. It's not, you know, um, so it was probably something that they had to chemically alter in a lab. <laughs> then it's likely our stomach and our gut and our, the rest of our bodies will also be confused by it. And that will promote your body's inflammatory response. 
your body will send out inflammatory cells, immune cells, to try to engulf this ingredient that is not recognizable. So this is why we're always trying to avoid inappropriate inflammation, and that's why I always choose ingredients in my foods that I recognize. So this is a great barbecue sauce that we just found recently at Trader Joe's. I love Trader Joe's. Take a walk around that store and do exactly what I'm recommending. Look at the ingredient labels of the foods and just make sure that they are not unprocessed ingredients. That's the most important thing. There are things at Trader Joe's that are processed, that are prepackaged with a lot of ingredients that are unwanted. So so do you do have to be careful it's not that everything at Trader Joe's is perfect just because it's there <laughs> but they do have lots of good fun options some foods that are packaged that happen to be not processed so this is one of them this is it's called Kansas City style barbecue sauce and they had a couple of different ones if you like ones that are a little more spicy you could choose that one um, but I really loved this one and I've been adding it to my chicken my um, any type of meat that I cook that I want it to have that barbecue flavor so um, this is one of my favorite ones that I've been eating recently and then another one is this one so um, Siete, the company, it's S-I-E-T-E, -E, Siete, and again, please let me know if you want these things written out for you, and I will put it in the comments of this video, but this happens to be one of my favorite companies. Um, we are gluten and dairy free in this house and they happen to have many gluten free options for chips and fajitas and um, they're usually made from either cassava flour or almond flour. Um, so they're really great replacements and they happen to taste so good that you don't even miss the gluten. Um, so that's something they have. They also have some dairy-free nut. Um, it's, they're like spreads and they are supposed to mimic the taste of let's say cheddar cheese or um, you know other types of white cheeses and um, they are awesome. They ha When you look at the ingredient label you will notice that every ingredient in there is a whole unprocessed food and it really does give you the same taste and flavor as some of those um, the dairy products or the gluten products that we're trying to avoid in this house at least. Um, but again, this is a newer one that we I had not seen yet, but it's called red enchilada sauce. And I mean, again, all the ingredients, tomatoes, water, apple cider vinegar, chili powder, avocado oil, salt, dates, chia seeds, flax seeds, I can go on and on, but there is not one ingredient in here that you wouldn't recognize as a whole unprocessed food, and it happens to taste amazing. So if you're going to be making like a fish taco or a meat taco using the fajitas from the same company, Siete, then this is a great addition at the end of the taco to add on a little sauce. I sometimes mix it with an avocado, so it's a kind of like a guacamole red sauce combo um, that I love to add to those foods. So those are some of the, my favorites from this week. Um, let's get into some of the ways that I try to keep my kitchen safer. Um, and that means trying to reduce the amount of plastic that we use as much as possible because plastic gets leached into our food and um, and all those compounds such as plastic and other pesticides and um, those types of chemicals, they are called endocrine disruptors. What does that mean? That means that these compounds like plastic and pesticides, they actually act like hormones. And so our bodies get very confused because it really 
causes this imbalance of hormones in our body. So if you're one of uh, if you're a girl that has some type of hormone imbalance, PCOS, um, if you're um, a man and you, if if any of you are are you know having um, libido issues or anything like this, it's possible that you're being exposed to too many endocrine disruptors. So just start by trying to cut back on the amount of plastics that you use or look through the cleaning supplies that you use, the personal care products that you use, and try to search for more safe options. And I can give you recommendations, um, names of brands and companies that I use. So please let me know if that's something you're interested in and I'm happy to give you suggestions. But these are some of the silicone containers that I use to put my food away in. So these are awesome. They, they close really tightly, they seal nicely, and they keep your food nice and fresh. So I keep my food in things like this instead of plastic bags. And then another option, instead of things like Tupperware, I use these glass, um, box, these little containers right here, and they seal perfect. Again, they keep everything perfectly um, clean and you know in, in without it does the food doesn't go bad anytime I keep these in the refrigerator and you could see exactly what is in there so you know what what you're grabbing when you reach for something in the refrigerator they stack nicely um, so this is a an awesome replacement for plastic or Tupperware containers so those are just some of the things I use. Um, I think I will just close off by my last thing to keep my house a little bit cleaner um, from these types of chemicals and plastics that we're trying to avoid is that I do have a really awesome filter to clean the water that I drink. So the, um, the brand that I like, it's called Berkey, which is spelled B-E-R, K-E-Y. So it's a Berkey water filter. I keep it on the counter. It's a countertop one, but you can get um, little uh, adjustments to add to your um, your sinks and your showers. And so that will also help as the water comes out of the faucet. But I just keep this countertop filter and it does clean out all of the chlorine or any of those um, you know uh, chemicals that we just don't want to be drinking it that you can get a filter for the fluoride as well because fluoride is also something we don't necessarily want to be drinking all the time so um, gosh I got through a lot today we talked about healthy fats healthy sweeteners. We talked about some of my secret ingredients, my green teas and matchas. Um, and then we talked about all of my safer products that I use in the kitchen to avoid using plastics and stuff like that. So um, I you probably, you might even need to take notes on the things that I talked about today, but feel free to um, write me your questions. If you, if I, if I, you need me to re uh, or remind you of any of the brand names or anything that I mentioned, just let me know and I'd love to help you. So it was nice to see everybody this week and uh, have a wonderful week. Have a nice, long, um, happy Labor Day weekend and I will see you next week. Bye everyone.